So hi guys, my name is Nachiketa. Welcome to my channel. In my last video, I have shown you how to create a single layer network and how to train that. Well, in this video, we are going to create a three layer network to recognize handwritten digits, right? You'll basically have an input of an image and you have to predict which digit is that, right? So let's straight away get to the code. So we are going to do this using TensorFlow, which is a open source Python library for machine learning applications, Keras, which is again, a open source library built upon TensorFlow for neural network applications. Here's how it looks like. We start off by importing TensorFlow as TF. We import matplotlib, right, which is basically used for visualization. And we import a specific function called pyplot that is used to plot the images. And we import numpy, which is numerical Python. After that, we're importing the MNIST dataset. Right? It's a popular data set of handwritten digits that contains about 70,000 images, I think, right? with the labeled outputs as well. So we import that using tf.keras.datasets.mnist and load that into a variable called objects. Next, we're dividing the object into two sections, right? the data set into two sections, the training section and the testing section. We train a neural network using the training section. Once our model are trained, we see how well it's trained using the testing section, right? So we divide into two sections, the training images and the training labels, right? The training label is basically the output, which digit is contained in that particular image. Next, we have the testing images and testing labels, and we load the data using objects.load data. After that, we're using a for loop to plot nine images to see how it looks like, right? So you just have to press shift plus enter to run in Python in the Google Collab notebook. So if I just press shift plus enter, so this is how the dates look like. All right. So we have to, this, these are the inputs and using this, we have to predict what digit is contained in that. So now the first step is to understand the data. All right. So I'm going to print out the shape of the data, which you need to know to build the neural network and how the image actually look like in the matrix form. So we print the shape using training images.shape and we see how a sample image looks like. So when I run this, you can see that first of all, we have the shape as 60,000 comma 28 comma 28, right? It's basically a collection of 60,000 images and each image is a 28 cross 28 pixel image, right? That means there are 28 into 28 input values in each image. And this is the matrix of how the image looks like, right? It's basically a bunch of numbers where each number represents the pixel intensity. So you can see the pixel intensity range from zero to the maximum value, which is 255, right? So before we give this data to the neural network, an important step is to normalize the data is basically rounding off to a scale of zero to one. This makes our training process very fast and makes it easier for the neural network to learn from the data, right? So in the next line, what we're doing is we're dividing each value in the training images and the testing images by 255. So now all values are between zero to one. Now that we've done this, we finally build our neural network, all right? So this is very simple. Like in the previous video, we start off by using the function tf.keras.models.sequential. This is basically going to create a layer of networks in sequence and inside this function we have to define each individual layer right so we start off by the first layer right so there's always going to be one input layer one output layer the number of hidden layers depends upon you how much you want to add so now what we're doing is since we know that each image is 28 cross 28 we need that many neurons in the first layer all right so we write tf.keras.layers.flatten we're writing flatten because we have a two dimensional image, right? We have a two dimensional image. We're converting into one dimensional so that we give it to one row of neurons and the input shape is 28 cross 28. We create the next layer by writing tf.keras.layers.dense. When we write the keyword dense, it ensures that each neuron in the previous layer is connected to every neuron in the next layer. So we are basically creating a fully connected neural network. And there are going to be 128 neurons in the hidden layer. And the activation function is called ReLU. Now this activation function is a new concept. 
in any neural network right be it an artificial neural network or the neural network inside your brain every neuron gets triggered or activated by something specific by something spe- some specific input for example if a person is scared of spiders there's something visual something about the visual perception of the spider that triggers the particular neurons in their head which sends a sensation of fear in the person right so by deciding the activation function we're basically deciding what is going to activate my neuron right so relu stands for rectified linear unit which is one of the most popular activation functions used in neural networks which basically activates positive values of any input and cancels all the negative inputs right i'll make a detour i'll make a very detailed tutorial on all types of activation functions but we using this one for now so we create the output layer now by using tf.keras.layers.dense and the number of neurons in the output layer will be 10 right because we have 10 classes from 0 to 9 whenever a particular digit is detected say number 7 is detected the corresponding neuron will fire right will send an output of 1 so we use the activation function as softmax so what this softmax activation function does is since you have 10 output classes for each class the probability will be sent as the output between 0 to 1 right so all the neurons will output the probability and one with the maximum probability will be picked right for example if the output is 7 for a particular input image neuron number 7 will output the maximum probability and that will be selected so that is how this works so after creating the neural network we have to assign certain parameters which is the optimization function and the loss function so we do that using model dot compile we use the adam optimizer which is again a modified version of the gradient descent algorithm and we use cross entropy as a method of measuring the loss and matrix is equal to accuracy when you train your model at every step it will print the accuracy of the model that's it the model construction is done now to train the model we use the keyword model dot fit and we provide the training image and the training label and declare the epochs epochs is basically the number of iterations you can change that according to how much you want and uh, when we finally run this you can see that after 5 iterations we get an accuracy of 94% however don't get fooled by this accuracy because this accuracy on the training section not the testing section the testing section is that part of the data set that your model has not seen so far to evaluate the accuracy you should check it on the testing section so we write model dot evaluate and give the argument as test images and test labels and when you print it you see that you get an accuracy of 93% which is lower than what you got on the training section but still it's good enough so another method to check the accuracy is to see how it's performing on the test section manually right so you simply take an element from the test section i pick the first element from the test section and plot it right so when you plot it you get this image which means the first element of the test section is the number 7 now you want to see if the model is predicting the same or not right so to predict you use the function model dot predict and in the input i give the test images and store it in the variable prediction right however this is the prediction for the entire testing set i am only picking the first element of that by using the index 0 right and and by using the keyword np dot argument max i'm basically checking which neuron has the maximum probability right because remember we use the softmax activation function so each neuron will fire the probability and i'm checking which one has the maximum so when i print this i get the number 7 right which means the seventh neuron has the maximum probability which means it's outputting a value of 7 which means my model is working pretty well right so that was it for this tutorial you can experiment with this neural network by adding more hidden layers or changing the number of neurons in each layer and see what results you get and if you have any doubts do leave that in the comments i'll be bring out more tutorials on neural networks so do subscribe and yeah thank you for watching